Pedro. Hola, Puebla. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's all I got. Um, so my name is Maz Jobrani. I am a stand-up comedian, and uh, I'm here to answer the question, uh, what's the point of happiness? Uh, yes, let me start by saying, what a depressing question. Um, yeah, I wonder if Andreas was in a depressed mood when he came up with that one, you know? He's like, I cannot go on. What is the point of happiness? That's my Andreas impression. Hola, I'm Andreas. Is that pretty good? That's all right. Okay. I'm trying, man. Um, so, uh, uh, first of all, let me just say, you guys, uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here in Puebla. What, what a great city it is. And I just, uh, I also learned uh, that you've got a volcano here. Popocatapetal, right? Is that right? Popocatapetal? That's a cool name. Popocatapetal. That's the longest volcano name I've ever seen in my life. By the time you warn someone the volcano is erupting, it'll be too late. That's a long name. <laughs> the volcano's erupting. Which volcano? Popo, Cata, Petal. We're dead. That's it. You gotta rename it to just Po. Volcano Po has erupted. Vamonos! I'm here to help, Puebla. So, uh, as a uh, stand-up comedian, I, uh, I, I hope that there is a, a point to happiness, or at least a point to making people happy. Um, uh, otherwise, I'd be out of a job. Um, uh, I actually want to tweak the question a little bit and, and say, what's the point of comedy? And I think that the point of comedy is, it's beyond just making people laugh. There's more to it. I think there's also uh, connecting with people, right? For example, in my stand-up comedy nowadays, I do a lot of material about my kids. I have a seven-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. Anybody here have young kids? Anybody have young kids? Anyone? Yeah, there you go. Yes, see? And you'll back me up on this, sir. You love your kids, right? You love your kids, yes, right? But they're the most exhausting people in the world. Yeah, see, we're connecting right now. You see that? When you, back, when you have young kids at home, your whole goal from the moment they wake up, your whole goal is to make them tired. From the moment they wake up, you're like, run, run, run. Climb, climb, climb. Fly, you can fly. Try flying. Flap your wings. Fly, 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 fly. And no matter what you do, when it comes time to sleep, they don't want to sleep, right? And here, here's the other crazy thing. When you have young kids at home, your time is no longer your own, right? You have to take care of your to-do list while they're sleeping. You have to be ready to go anytime, any place, right? You're like a special forces Navy SEAL. When you have young kids at home, like the other day, my kids were sleeping. I went to my wife. I go, hey, let's have some sex. Yeah, she goes, I'm not in the mood. I go, I'm not in the mood either. But the enemy's sleeping. Let's go. Move it, move it, move it. Let's go. <laughs> Disrobe, dismount. I got to kill Bin Laden. Let's do this. That's right, people. That's what we call sex in my house, killing Bin Laden. That's right. Sometimes we go weeks without killing Bin Laden, if you know what I'm saying, young man. Yeah. Sometimes I got to make Bin Laden commit suicide, if you know. Thank you. Yes. Some of the guys know what I'm talking about. We're connecting. See? Comedy connects people. That's what I'm telling you. And as a parent, too, by the way, I know you know this, too, it's a different world of raising kids now. The world is different than when I was a kid, all right? Now, they have something called quality time. You have to, have, you have to spend time with your kids. My parents never spent time with me. Okay, I was born in Iran. I grew up in America. I hear some kids sometimes, they go, my dad never plays catch with me. I tell them, I go, Iranian dads or immigrant, macho dads, I'm sure Mexican dads are the same. They don't play catch with anybody. People go, my dad never came to my soccer game. I tell them, my dad, Iranian dad, he came to one soccer game. One soccer game, he tried to bribe the referees. <laughs> yeah, you know about that in Mexico. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Whoever pays the most wins the game. It's crazy, man. The, 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 is, is like, like there's, there's research now. We live in this research culture with our kids. There's research that tells you how to raise your kids. There's research that tells you how to put your kids to sleep, okay? The research says if you want your kids to fall asleep by 7 o'clock, you got to start the process at 5.30. Yeah, because the research says you want to ease them. You want to ease them. Ease them into sleep. No one ever eased me into sleep. When I was a kid in Iran, I'd be playing outside. My dad, hey, 
I'm going to count to three. If you're not in by three, you're going to sleep outside with the wolves. I was like, there's wolves in Iran? They had no research. They didn't know what they were doing. You know how many psychological problems our parents have caused us? There's a reason why everyone in my generation is in therapy. Yeah, the other one my dad would do, I'd be playing outside. I'm gonna count to three. If you're not in by three, your mother and I, we're gonna pack, we're gonna leave. You're gonna raise yourself, your brothers, your sisters with the wolves all together. <laughs> we're leaving. He'd be at the door, one, two, two and a half, two and three quarters, two and 15 sixteenths. That's how I learned math. Two and 19 twentieths. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, word, there's a term for, you know what they cause? It's called separation anxiety. I have that now because of my parents. When I go to dinner with my wife, when she gets up to go to the bathroom, I go, where are you going? She goes, I'm gonna go pee. I go, okay, I'm here, I'm waiting. One, two, two and a half, 20, 15, 16. Yeah, man. We connect. So comedy connects people. I also think comedy allows people to talk about serious subjects in a funny way. We can make fun of po politics and we can make fun of uh, media. For example, when I was in the US during the Bush administration, right when the war with Iraq had started, I was doing a joke about George Bush and there was a girl sitting in the audience at the comedy store who was in the military and she goes, you can't make fun of our commander in chief during a time of war. I was like, are you kidding me? I go, that's the whole point of democracy. That's, that's the reason, supposedly, why we're going to Iraq, to bring democracy to them. And you're telling me I can't make fun of the president of America in America? I go, that's the whole point of America. That's the whole point of the West. I, I, I told her, I said, I couldn't make fun of the president of Iran in Iran, right? If I made fun of the president of Iran in Iran, you'd be like, hey, that was a good show. When's your next show? I'd be like, there are no more shows. <laughs> the Ministry of No Show showed up. My next show will be in prison. It'll be my last show. And then George Bush left and comedians were sad because we couldn't make fun of him anymore. But then there's always a George Bush in America and the new one is Donald Trump. You know who I'm talking about. Oh my God, what an idiot. What an idiot. This guy, he's comedy gold, I'm telling you. He's offended everybody. He offended Mexicans, obviously, right at the bat, right off the bat. And first of all, he's made it okay for all the racists in America to come out. This has been the scariest thing. He offended Mexicans, he offended women, he's offended Muslims. I was watching, there was a rally in New Hampshire, and one of his followers got up and said, you know, there's a problem in this country, and I'm gonna come right out and say it. It's Muslims. <laughs> and Trump goes, oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna look into that. Okay, keep going. I was like, what, you're gonna look into that? Like it's a real request. What an idiot. Right, he's supposed to be like, no, that's not a problem, calm down. But he's like, no, put that on the list of things we're gonna look into. <laughs> Americans are so afraid of Muslims right now, it's the craziest thing, you should, oh my God. Did you hear about the kid in Texas who brought a clock to school and they arrested him? That's how afraid they are. There was a kid, a Sudanese Muslim kid, he made extra credit, he brought a clock to school. I mean, his name was Ahmed Mohammed, so that's not a good start. <laughs> If I'm his dad, I'd be like, Ahmed Mohammed, you want to do extra credit, you know, make an engine, not a, nothing that ticks. If it ticks, Americans are going to be scared. <laughs> Americans are scared. I'll tell you, I experienced it firsthand um, last Christmas. My, okay, so my kid, half Iranian, half Indian. My wife is Indian. Our neighbor's kid, we live in Los Angeles. Our neighbor's kid, half black, half white. We live in LA where we see a lot of diversity, okay? Now, the neighbor's kid, he had his cousin come from Wisconsin to visit. This little six-year-old white kid from Wisconsin, I guess he doesn't have as much diversity. I took them to go see the movie Annie, and we went to the bathroom to wash our hands, and we're washing our hands. An Indian Sikh walks in with a turban, washes his hands, and walks out. My kid, neighbor's kid, they don't even notice it. The kid from Wisconsin, he starts freaking out. He turns to me, he goes, that guy was ISIS. I go, what? He goes, yeah, the guy with the turban was ISIS. I go, dude, calm down. That's an Indian Sikh. That's who wears turbans. I go, by the way, I don't think ISIS would come to see the movie Annie. <laughs> I, 
I'm pretty sure ISIS is in. We're going to fight the infidel and kill them. But before we do, I just want to see Annie one more time. You know, because, yeah, right? When she sings, it's a hard knock life for us. I'm like, it is Annie, it really is. And I told him, I said, secondly, I said, listen, I go, secondly, you've been playing with my son all weekend. He's like that guy. He's, my son is half Indian. The kid was confused. He goes, your son is half ISIS? I go, no. I go, my wife was born in India. He goes, your wife is ISIS? I go, no, my wife isn't ISIS. I go, I mean, she terrorizes me, but that's just because she's my wife. Um, she's like an offshoot of ISIS. It's called wife sis. They're terrorizing husbands all over the world right now. This, uh, by the way, uh, are you somebody, who's listening to me translated? Who's listening? Are you being translated? Anybody? You're hearing me, yeah? I love this. This is the second time I've done this, and there's a guy translating right now. Whatever I say, he's saying, right? Oh, I love this guy. Okay, so let's try something, okay? Let's try, okay. Uh, hi, my name is Maz. Did he say that? Did he say, great. And then I'm going to say, uh, I'm bald. Did he say that? Okay, here we go. Um, I can't feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. Yes, I love it. Did he say that? Did he sing it? Did he sing it? He said, no, he didn't. He just said it? Come on. He's got to sing it. No puedo ese la 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 la, mucho me gusta. I don't know. <laughs> me gusta. Okay. Um, all right, my time is almost up. Listen, I I, I want to tell you. So I think comedy. I think the point of comedy is we can we can make fun of a lot of stuff. We can also bring things to people's attention. For example, when the Boston bombings happened a few years ago, I happened to be in Boston a couple of weeks before the Boston bombings. And when I first heard about the Boston bombings, it broke my heart. Okay, my first thought was that my heart went out to the victims. But then my second thought, as a Middle Easterner, was just please don't be Middle Eastern. Please don't be Middle Eastern. And the news came out. They said they're Chechnya, and I was like, yes. And then they go, but they're Muslim. I was like, shit. <laughs> but I don't know if you guys heard about this or not, but there's a lot of stupid people online nowadays. If you're on social media, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, as soon as it was revealed in the United States that the bombers were Chechnyan, people in the U.S. went on Twitter and they started tweeting that we should attack the Czech Republic. <laughs> it's the wrong country. But people are so dumb. <laughs> Get the goddamn checks, goddamn it. I never liked the checks. Or checkers, for that matter. How dumb do you have to be? I wish there were an app online where you could just slap somebody. Wouldn't that be great, like a twit slap app? Like a hand comes out of the phone and just slaps the guy? Let's develop Ciudad de las Ideas. Um, and then, I don't know if you heard about this, but again, I'm going to the, the whole Boston bombing thing. Um, before they found out that the bombers were Chechnyan, the New York Post, which is a conservative newspaper, took a picture of two Moroccans who happened to be at the finish line wearing backpacks, and they put it on their cover, and they said, these are the guys. They weren't the guys, but the New York Post was like, hey, two Arabs and backpacks, got to be the guys. I felt so bad for those two guys because the whole America was looking for them. These, first of all, I wonder how they ended up down there in the first place. I wonder if like the night before, one guy called the other guy, hey, Muhammad, let's go down to the finish line. We have a picnic. Bring your backpack. <laughs> what could go wrong? Those guys are traumatized. They'll never wear backpacks the rest of their lives. The next time someone calls, hey, Muhammad, let's go. You bring a backpack. Bullshit, I'm not gonna wear a backpack. Muhammad, calm down, it's just a backpack. I'm not gonna wear a backpack! <laughs> Muhammad, we're going skydiving, you have to wear a backpack. I dive without a backpack. I just jump out of the plane, I go, Muhammad! If Allah wants me to land, I land. If not, I die. They're traumatized. Don't know if you heard about this in Boston. Before they found the bombers, the day after the bombing, there was two Saudis who got on an airplane at Boston Airport, leaving Boston, as they were walking down the aisle, speaking Arabic to one another loudly, just walking down the aisle, just That's not Arabic, but that's what it sounds like to me. Anyway. 
and the passengers overheard them and kicked them off the plane. Yeah, now as a Middle Eastern male, normally I'm offended by that. But the day after a bombing, I understand. Because if I'm on an airplane with my Arab friend the day after a bombing, and we're walking down the aisle, and he's going, hala mahala mahala, hala mahala, I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. No hala mahala, mahala, mahala. You've been watching the news. They're looking for us. Go have a seat, have a seat. Send me a tweet, I'll slap you. <laughs> Halfway through the flight, he gets up. Hey, Maz, hala mahala, mahala, mahala. I'll be like, I don't know this hala mahala guy. <laughs> Go, Yankees. All right, guys, uh, so I'm going to wrap this up right now, but I, I hope uh, I answered the question a little bit. I think the point of comedy is that we can deal with some serious subjects in a funny way. I once heard the stand-up comedian D.L. Hughley say that stand-up comedy or comedy is like giving people their medicine in orange juice so that they don't taste it. So that's what it is, all right? So I hope I'm, I'm going to keep giving you guys juice. I hope you keep drinking it. Thank you. I'm Maz Jobrani. Take care.